Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Trust in Messiah. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rivas. And who, sir, in the Raptors hoodie are you? I am your producer, Matt Duncan. Freddie, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, trying to stay safe here during you know the age of age of new yeah. variants and yeah. and not free rapid tests. Doing my best, but I, uh, I just bought some. I just bought some rapid tests for uh, sixty five bucks. It came to for uh, five tests. I love it. I I personally am just gonna. I'm just like putting like every time I go into shoppers, I'm just like throwing a twenty on the ground, being like, oh "You got God. you guys won." Um, <laughs> that's the worst place to go for them. <laughs> yes, it truly is. Uh, okay, well, we're not we're not uh, just gonna uh, you know make digs here on uh, yeah, unavailable healthcare uh, yeah. and the attack on our public system, but we are gonna let you know we are a Raptors podcast. We are hardcore uh, Raptors fans. We have analysts on. We have comedians, and uh, yeah, we have a good time. We talk NBA too. Maddie, what's up? If people want to help us, you know, kind of like grow as a podcast, support us in any way, how are they going to do that? You can go to our website, dunkspodcast.com, as well as the sonarnetwork.com. Our podcast is there for you to listen to. But of course, you're always on the podcatcher. So please subscribe and rate. Uh, you can pretty much listen to us anywhere from Spotify to Amazon Music to all those like Critch and Crunch and Crooch and whatever else these podcast apps are. You got to find the one that works for you. It's me. I'm a pocket cast kind of guy, but uh, you know, we, everyone's got their own freak flag that they want to fly. So go for it. And if you want to join our Patreon, please do. I think we've got a little content coming your way very soon. So maybe it's time to get in. If we start having some more extra content on the Patreon, you know, it's not just the same day uh recordings that you're gonna get you don't have to wait and as well there's no ads that play in those episodes that we put on patreon so you know it's clean it's fun and you're giving us a little bit of support and as well uh speaking of support your head needs support and that is the toque and we still have five ready to go get them while they're hot there's supply shortages all over the world so we don't know when we're gonna get these damn toques back in stock Matt, you're such a pro. You covered all the loose ends. Whether you know you're listening to this pod on your cricks, cratches, or crunches, <laughs> um, we do appreciate it. We had two really, really good guests uh, on today. Uh, Vong Show was returning. Um, you can check out his podcast on the Sonar Network. Uh, it is called "You Better Represent," dealing with representation uh, in Hollywood, uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera. We got. Uh, Internet Lauren, aka Lauren Mitchell, a wonderful comedian, a host of Cavern, uh, the Cavern of Secrets, and uh, she's also doing live shows. You can check her uh, her shows uh, with her comedy partner at uh, the Garrison. I think it's, she said the first Monday or second Monday uh, of every month, COVID permitting. Um, man, you know we talk. Uh, you know Utah as a six man potentially. We talk uh, Nav Batia. Uh, getting played by Cal Penn in, uh, in in his own movie, his own biopic, and what what it would be like if if he if he almost missed a game. How are we going to dramatize that? We talk Zion and and weight issues and how to navigate that, and um, we also talk kind of forgotten storylines in the age of you know Omicron, but. Uh, yeah, without you know any further ado, I think we're we're probably good to get cracking here. Uh, I will say, uh, as I usually do, um, Black Lives Matter, stop Asian hate, uh, email your city councilors, and defund the police. And also, uh, you know, I usually add something like this, but you just stay engaged. We got an election coming up. 
you can make your voice heard uh, in Ontario. So make sure you do do that. And um, yeah, let's talk some basketball. Let's get rolling on this episode. It was a very, very fun one. Maddie, if you feel like we're good to get started here, please just give me those deliciously tasty words. Okay. Let's uh let's do this. Let's get this pod rolling. Uh, I'm very excited to have these two guests on. Uh, it's been a, a wild week in the NBA. Uh, you know, not super wild for the Raptors, but also not unwild. Um, yeah, let's sh- let's just get rolling here. Uh, they've done the pod um, once before. I'm excited to have them back. Uh, they are uh, with the Sonar Network. We'll be plugging their podcast, of course. Uh, an incredible comedian. Uh, fun person, and um, yeah, I'm gonna learn more about them. Give it up as loud as you can, even if you're at home alone for Vong Show. Hey, what up? What up? Thanks for having me. Uh, hey, no problem. Happy to have you. <laughs> uh, listen, usually I, I'm just a bit stunned right now. Usually there's music that comes flying in. Oh. <laughs> uh, but let's just, I mean, I don't know. Is there, can you hear music? Can I, you not hear it? <laughs> I, I can't hear it. I can't hear it either, but we, we know it's there. So it'll, oh, it, it'll be there in the app. Oh, I know why. Because this is why. Okay. Oh, okay. It's there. It comes in at the end. There you go. <laughs> Huge. No, I didn't have my uh, mixer plugged into the stream yard. Sorry, everyone. Ah, uh, all good. Um, <laughs> we're, we're making it work out here, you know, shortest days of the year. Come on, right? <laughs> uh vong what's up thanks for doing the show again appreciate it yeah no thanks for having me i'm 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 excited this is a great time for the raptors it is a great time for the raptors uh it's been a fun like development year i think if yeah i mean i've said a million times in the pod but if you're not hanging on every win and loss uh there's a lot of fun (laughs) storylines but um yeah let's uh let's bring on guest number two Uh, she has never done the pod Uh, we've known each other for a long time uh, I think I knew about her a long time, you know, before we ever met. She's an incredible comedian. Um, she did my show Rap Battles way back in the day. Uh, also is the host of uh, Cavern of Secrets. And um, yeah, just an incredible person all around. Amazing comedian. Awesome writer. Give it up as loud as you can, even if you're at home alone, for Lauren Mitchell. Okay, there's the music, you know? <laughs> Long, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's giving vacation. It's yes. giving island. It's giving Evita. <laughs> it's giving super spreader event. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song you listened uh, to right before you spread that virus as far as it could go on the shortest day of the year? Well, it was royalty free, let me tell you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um what's up how are you thanks for doing the pod yo thanks for having me i'm super excited i'm super excited when you asked so stoked to be here sweet uh okay well yeah let's let's just dive right into it um maddie i know you're there don't need to play the uh existential like are you there game <laughs> i've done that for probably about 40 episodes straight you know so um but yeah give me your your loudest noisiest weirdest raptors sting mm-hmm. nice sick uh okay vong let's uh let's start with you um and uh i guess just you know an open-ended question if you want to take it in a different direction but um i feel like utah watanabe is becoming the sixth man for the raptors um obviously birch has been injured uh Mm -hmm. precious uh hopefully is doing okay uh he's under covid protocols um, but, uh, Utah, you know, since he's come back, is like a big part of the lineup. He just seems to be like the perfect role player. Uh, yeah. Do uh, I guess my question is, do you think he's the, this season six man or, you know, is it more of a situational thing right now? I think, you know, you said, you said two things there. One was with, with the injuries. And I think while, 
while OG Ananobi is out, um, for sure, I think that Utah can be our our sixth man of the moment. I, I don't think of the year, but of, of the moment, um, because he 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 can back up either either Pascal or Scotty. Um, he brings that energy. He brings the defense. He brings, you know, the three point shooting. But you know, definitely off the bench, it's it's that it's that energy that's most important. Um, I would say though, like for the year, I, I would say it'd be tough because I feel like on this team we kind of have like forget like a, like a six man uh, bench player. We more have like six starters because once once we get OG back um, and Kem back, I think it's going to be situational on you know on who's going to be who's who's going to be in our starting lineup and so the person who gets squeezed out i think would be our sixth man of the year so either if that's gary trent or if that's scotty barnes or if that's kem birch um whichever of those gets squeezed out um i think will be our sixth man because they're the you know they're kind of um you know good enough to be on the on the starting lineup but yeah there's definitely not enough room yeah i think that's that's exactly right um you know, Utah doesn't really seem like he's going to be a, a starter level player for the Raptors, and um, and Birch will start when he comes back. OG will will start. So I think Trent or um, Trent or uh, oh, who else? Uh, Barnes. Yeah, I think is, is oh. definitely a candidate. Um, it doesn't seem like Boucher. I, I think I think that's why I brought up this question. I just feel like Utah's really outplaying Boucher, oh, and. Yeah. For a while, I thought maybe Boucher was like the person who's going to come off the bench and like light it up. But it just seems like Utah can really play. He can really give the team, you know, what they need. But uh, yeah, to your point, I do think it is um, pretty situational right now. Uh, how about you, Orn? Where where are you at? Like, you know, do you think Utah is a potential six man uh, for the Raptors, or you know, do you think it's a little bit situational? Yeah, I agree with with the both of you. I think it definitely is situational, but I think that Utah is doing what Nick Nurse likes, which is performing when he needs to perform and yes. being versatile and I think you see that in him playing minutes over Boucher, right? Like Boucher wasn't really coming through and coming through in those clutch moments and Utah mm -hmm. has been. So you know, he's doing what Nick Nurse likes. And if he's doing what Nick Nurse likes, then he's going to play minutes in NBA games, I think. Yeah, totally. And I, I feel like Utah's really good at not making mistakes, which, you know, mm -hmm. to your point, it's like Nurse. It's, I love how you said that, too. It's like Nurse likes people who are really good and do what they're <laughs> supposed to. Like, because he does seem to have that tone. Like, even in, you know, his post games, like sometimes the answers are just like, so basic and they'll, they'll be like why'd you go with you know justin champagne and he'll be like well everyone else sucked and uh yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, I like, yeah yeah i know it's like i, I think I, i'm i'm a very sensitive person so there's always a part of me that's like hey nick but then there's another part of me that it's like okay this is a high like you know high octane atmosphere and they're all, uh, you know, a lot of the players are worthy of like opportunity. So at the, uh, you know, at the end of this, oh. somebody does have to get cut. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I didn't say yeah. Like we've got we've got a really deep team, and you know, as evidenced by the fact that we're we're still keeping our our heads above water, above, um, you know, even with all these injuries going on. Yeah, I I think so. You know, I feel like I uh, I. I was probably overly optimistic, but I said Raptors six in the East before the season started. And my logic was that I feel like we have the type of roster that's young and can kind of stay afloat during the regular season. And it's going to be by committee. And yep. short of my, my, my one caveat is that if Fred goes down for any mm. significant length of time, then that I think the bottom could fall out. But, you know, if Pascal goes, you know, Pascal was injured, OG's been injured. And I think that this team can still be pretty good uh, without those guys. You know, not both of them, but. Um, okay. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to get silly and weird. I mean, we're already prone to do that here, but uh, Maddie, come in. It's, uh, it's time to get into the, the movie world. I, uh, okay. You know, the, there's a serious part of this, which is. There was a Giants of Africa, um, you know, event, 
and uh, uh, Masai contracted COVID. Looks like uh, Nav Batia also contracted COVID. Mm. I'm not exactly sure about Precious, but he's under, you know, uh, like isolation or whatever. Uh, and it came out that Nav uh, has not missed a game. So since the Raptors, a home game, uh, since the Raptors started in 95 has been to, you know, <laughs> 41 cow. home games a year. Like it's just absolutely madness. Was he at um, the Tampa games? He wasn't, I don't, okay. He wasn't at the Tampa games and I'll email him that you said that. <laughs> okay, <Matt? laughs> um, no, but yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? I bet you he was at the Tampa games. Come on. Really? Um, <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. That, you know, that doesn't count as a home game. It was on. a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't count. Yeah. That's the 72 he, away games. <laughs> he took the team to Bush gardens. They had a lot, you know, <laughs> um, Shout out Orlando's Bush Gardens. Uh, me and <laughs> have made fun of it extensively, but it does seem pretty cool. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, that just got me thinking, like, I want a dramatization, uh, you know, like a quick quick paragraph or something. I want I want to hear what, what you think would be, like, you know, uh, what would be, oh, I'm sorry, a key part of this is there's a Nav Bhatia movie coming out. Um, and, oh, God, I'm forgetting his name. Who's? Cal Penn. Cal Penn uh, is playing yeah. Nav. Uh, thank you, Matt. And I want a dramatization of like a day where where, where Nav almost missed a game, but still made it. So uh, let's let's start with you, Lauren. G give me um, even if you're like making it up on the spot, that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, like what's a what's a dramatic scenario anytime, any year uh, that um, that Nav almost missed a game, but did make the game eventually. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for letting me know that there's a movie about Nob and that he's being played by Kel Penn, because I did not know that she was in development. <laughs> right? I'm in color me intrigued. <laughs> um, okay, I do think that whatever, whenever it is, it has to like involve the TTC. There has to be yep. an extended, like, you know how we all get fucked up by the TTC? Like, yes. I've been late to a Raptors game because the TTC. Had had me. I can swear, right? Oh yeah, that's okay. Okay. Oh yeah. The TTC Only when you talk me... about the TTC, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the yeah. TTC had me fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Uh... <laughs> driver change. So, I get you. What the fuck? Yeah, and I feel like if it's if it's giving like Harold and Kumar sort of mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe like Nav accidentally took some edibles because I just like I don't want to slander him. Like not that. <laughs> As, as a bona fide <laughs> yeah. stoner, I don't think you can slander people for smoking weed. But, sure. um, you know, allegedly, whenever if he's not into that, then I don't <laughs> want him to be offended. <laughs> but let's say maybe he accidentally has an edible. And sure. then he has this crazy stoned adventure on the TTC. And, like, somehow, like, Jack and Maddie D are there. He, oh, like, yeah. runs into them. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, yes. it's not fully fleshed out, but in my no, it's mind, okay. it's... <laughs> It's very sto I, it's very stoner comedy realness. <laughs> hey, I am very into it. Uh, I'm definitely picturing Nav like you know being in like you know how there's like old old bay, not the spice, like old bay station. <laughs> like somehow he's in there with like a like you know like a headlight or whatever. Um, I guess where they filmed the Grimes video. <laughs> yeah, they're looking for evidence of the Matrix uh, fight scene and the Grimes video. And the one installation I saw uh, there at Nuit Blanche. Um, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> iconic, you know? <laughs> Subsonic Sounds was a pretty good one, not going to lie. Uh, okay. Um, Vong, what's up? Give hey. me your, your, your drama-filled day. We're Vong, you know, yeah, like, or we're Vong. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Nav, uh, you know, has something happened but still does make the game. Yeah, well, I would say I'm shocked that he's never missed a game in 25 years because he has to come in all the way from Mississauga or Etobicoke. And goodness sake, you think there'd be the traffic is so horrible that uh, mm -hmm. you'd think he would have missed at least one. So that, totally. that that is shocking to hear. But I would say, um, you know, since it's Hollywood, I would say the setup would have to be like really dramatic. Like it was a really important game. Like it like. I, I would like place the storyline of this was like game seven in that series where we're playing against uh, the 76ers and uh, he's got to make it there. But, you know, the 76ers 
um you know they i would say that somebody from the 76ers kidnaps them oh um, okay this is yeah good. because he's like our good luck charm and actually i got this idea from you know i watched too much episodes of, of saved by the bell when i was young sure. and um you know I, I lots of kidnapping they, in that show yeah well what it is is when when they <laughs> play their rival i think valley high or something like that i don't know why i'm actually remembering the names of their right. rival school but um and they had this mascot that was a pig um and so they kidnapped him and no i'm not comparing navbacha to a pig don't hey. get me wrong i'm not racist i'm just talking about the episode yeah we're, anyway. we're not coming at nav for real okay whether it's edibles yeah. mascot comparisons <laughs> nav if your people are listening we're fans okay Yes, yes. Um, and so anyway, the uh, the whole point was so they they kidnapped the the other team's good luck charm. Yeah. And I think you know, I think that that Nav not being there would have an effect not only on the players but on the audience as well because when you're in the stadium, you know, they show him on the monitor. He is like totally. a part of the show. So yeah. I feel like the 76ers would do anything to get that advantage. So they would kidnap him, but then I don't know somebody. I don't know, somebody dramatic, like I guess back then we had Kawhi Leonard. So let's say uh Kawhi Leonard's uncle Dennis um somehow <laughs> found a knock gotcha and uh uh brought him in a helicopter um last minute. I would that that's my storyline. Uh that's yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely wonderful. I'm very happy that um, you know, Uncle Dennis came in there right at the end. <laughs> like I thought it was gonna be just Kawhi, and I'm like, I don't know if Kawhi is a rescue mission type person, but Uncle Dennis for <laughs> sure is. Um, and I uh, you better believe he can fly a helicopter. Uh okay, Maddie, what's up? We got we got Uncle Dennis choppers, <laughs> edibles. Yeah. Um, you, you know, from? like I think, I think both Vong and Lauren's ideas. I don't, I don't even want to insert those into the the biopic about them. They're their own movies. I feel like those can stand on their own. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but Cal Penn does kind of have a James Bond deal to do a bunch of different movies as Nav, and one of them is called uh, Nav and Jerry Diaz Go to Harvey's. <laughs> So as okay. I said on the podcast before, Jerry Diaz is another court side season seat holder. He's the head of the auto workers union in Ontario. And what makes them get along so well is because obviously we know Nav owns car dealerships. So he's in the car world just as well. So these two guys want to smuggle in some Harvey's burgers into the game. Okay. And there's all kinds of tomfoolery that happens on the way to that happening because they got to stuff their pants with all these Harvey's burgers. And uh, on the way, we're going to have all kinds of things that are going to, you know, like maybe they're uh, they're driving and they, <laughs> they they're stuck. They're just stuck on the DVP forever, sure, sure. Just, just forever. Just like, you know, a very like uh, I, I'd like to see a scene where they just kind of sitting in traffic and they have a heart to heart about cars and stuff uh but yeah once they get there they they you know it's the big moment they've got the harveys they're in their seats now they don't exactly sit next to each other uh if if i'm jerry uh you know nav's a bit over there but he could see a wink if they were to wink right so these guys they've got they've got, <laughs> they've got the harveys burgers and then they they meet at center court halfway through interrupting the game okay i'm following out this is where you make a cameo in your season seats. Huge. They launch one of the Harvey's burgers. 309. A, yeah. The 309. Yeah, that's far, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when we find out that Nav actually is like rookie of the year. And that's <laughs> okay. going to set up the next movie where he's going to be a pitcher for the Jays. So anyway, put a lot of thought into it. They go to Harvey's. And I'd probably take some idea uh, from Lauren, too. And yeah, maybe they aren't edibles trying to get to Harvey's. <laughs> yeah, you're just spice it up. Throw in edibles, too? <laughs> wow. How dare you? Um, I'll, I'll say this. I love that you, like, right away are like, this isn't one movie, it's 10. Also, <laughs> the first movie's boring. They're on the highway the whole time. Um, it's like, uh, oh, God, what's that? Uh, uh, the guy who plays Bane, he's in that movie where he just drives. Oh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. I, I heard that movie's good. Lock, I think it is. I heard it's actually good, but I just imagine. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He's in the car the whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Okay, huge. Uh, I'm glad that you brought Harvey's in the mix. You know, a Canadian chain. Thank you. Shout out to the president of the Auto Workers Union. Yeah, yeah. Big Solidarity. Jerry Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Thanks, Matt, for mapping out the floor plan. Just so people can see where the, where the season seat holders are. Uh, all right. Mine is, um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Here, here's what I'm doing. I don't know the exact year, but picture this, you know, Nav's at his, his dealership and the ice storm, uh, happens. So people are losing power. You know, the, the dealership loses power. People start to kind of, you know, make noise around the dealership. He's like, what am I going to do? I got to guard these cars. You know what I mean? He starts setting up like booby traps, like kind of home alone style. They're not working. Uh, people are evading them pretty easy. Uh, so he, he gets a gun. So um, <laughs> Nav, has, Nav gets a handgun. He's hanging on to it and he's in his panic room. Um, <laughs> it's really scary, actually. It's like a horror part. And there's a break in. There's a break in to, uh, you know, to, to the dealership. And he's like, I don't know what to do, man. I don't want to hurt anybody. So he shouts out, like, get out of here. Like, um, but then, then he hears someone say, go Celtics. So he just starts firing like through the wall. Uh, and he hears a scream. He goes out. He sees a little bit of blood and he can't find it. And then he sees someone running away with a, with a bloody arm. And he, you know, runs after them for a bit and he loses them. But then he decides he's got to get back to the dealership. And it's kind of like that Sopranos episode, the Russian. You don't know. If, you don't know if the guy survived. Pine Barrens. No. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What's it called? Pine Barrens. Pine Barrens. Shout out to old Sopranos. Episode. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah. Nav then goes. He's on time. Nice game. Uh, the Raptors blow out inconsequential but the whole time you know you're in his head and he's like did i kill someone i don't know i gotta greet jv or whatever <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that's my knob story Nob, if oh you listen to this i swear we all like you okay like we're just having some fun um we just knocked out 30 I, was the most the yours was the most slanderous though Chris. it was yeah was, I, like, I feel like <laughs> Mine was like as soon as I said Nav has a gun, I I definitely felt there <laughs> in my own apartment, like to just go. So I, you know, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he's not. Uh, I don't know, pro gun. Uh, Nav, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Okay, let's uh, let's talk some NBA. Uh, Maddie, uh, if you could give me your uh, your loudest, weirdest, Adam Silverist, uh, yeah, sting. <laughs> This is Adam Silver. Yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, okay. This is, uh, I guess, kind of a difficult question. Uh, I usually have like a, a my own answer loaded in uh, to whatever question I do ask, but I I don't. I don't think that I have a specifically good answer. I'm, I'm curious about the conversation, I guess. So let's, let's go to you first Vong. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, with, with Zion, it's, it's obviously a very sad scenario. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, as sad as sports injuries are, but you know, it's upsetting. Mm -hmm. uh, Zion's working his way back. Uh, has had uh, surgery on his foot. There is, um, you know, I guess like a compounding issue and there's, there's some, um, complications with his uh his foot surgery and healing and injury and it's looking like he might get shut down for the rest of the year very reminiscent of you know the origins of joel and bead's career mm -hmm. and unfortunately also you know there's some greg odin stuff mm -hmm. there like you know just just someone who's a very very good player plagued with injuries at the beginning of their career however there's a lot of conversation around his weight you know we've seen it with Jokic as well Mm -hmm. and you know like fat jokes and uh just people talking about like food that they think he eats and mm. it all it's just it just kind of bothers me and it's just like i don't know i feel like we have to find a, a different yeah. method as fans and analysts to talk about athletes and and weight and injuries and 
all, all that, you know, sorry, uh, meandering aside, wh- what do you think about the conversation around Zion and, and how can it be healthier? I guess that's my question. You know, I, I think I think there there's two parts of it. And it is a little bit difficult, but I, I think there's two parts. I think there's the fans and the analysts. And with the fans, you know, obviously with the memes, with the Twitter trolls, you know, they're, they're always going to be there. So I'm not sure we can do much about that. But the part where I'm more disappointed in Fair. is are, are the analysts. Um, like, you know, when when um, when Charles Barkley and, 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 and Shaq made fun of him saying that, you know, Zion it was like if they if those two had a baby, you know, and then of course that amplified like all across the internet. Even though like the other memes were like because Shaq said it, it just really really blew up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I, you know, so I, I would say like I would hope that at least like the paid analysts on TV would have a little bit more 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 sensitivity around the making fun of somebody's weight. Now I do think though that. Um, that what is fair game is conditioning um and um like like conditioning uh um and performance and injury recovery and right. prevention and i think all of those are affected by weight and i right. think if it's held to those areas i do think that that is fair game to talk about his weight in relation to injury prevention injury recovery things like that because you know he's injured on you know what what is it the 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 uh the uh, fifth metatarsal and we know that weight does affect that so i do think there's a conversation to be had mm-hmm. um if they keep it to those areas as opposed to literally just you know putting up like photos of him like before after and making fun of him um but i will say where it gets complicated is um with NBA players and and with Zion in particular, when they are in shape and they're doing workouts and they're posting their workout videos, then they get all the praise for looking good. I think that's why when they're not looking as good, um, then people are comparing those two photos. Because with Zion, um, you know, I remember prior to entering the NBA bubble, he was really posting a lot of like photos of like, you know, look at all the weight I've lost. Here's where right. I am now. So, you know, even though I don't love it, I can, I, I can see like the before and after pictures are coming both from his Instagram and they're comparing what he said about himself. So I don't know. It It is unfortunate, but you know, it sounds like I'm blaming the victim, but I am saying like, you know, you, you also can't take all of the praise um, when you're posting these, these photos um, when you're in shape and then not expect to, to get some backlash when you're, when you're a little bit out of shape. Right. Yeah. No, I think, you know, you had some good points with uh, with conditioning. And I think it is complicated when someone is a public figure. And, you know, Zion, for instance, is someone who, yeah, is like known for being powerful. And I think his size is a part of that. And, you know, similarly, you, you can, go, can go the other way with a guy like Chris Boucher, where his weight's constantly discussed in terms of like having not enough power and, yeah, I mean, I, I think, the, I, I think I would hope that people would be more sensitive. And, and and your point about fans is exactly correct. It's a it's a little bit like that's I guess for the trolls and analysts is where is maybe you know there's more responsibility and not necessarily this podcast, but we're trendsetters and you know the the language we use to describe bodies and that sort of thing. I feel like does ha- have a you know, trickle down effect and, you know, not to, not to shout out Reagan, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah, Lauren, where, where are you at on this, like this Zion conversation? And I guess just like in general. Yeah, I will say um, <clears throat> as someone who's only gotten into basketball in the last, like, you know, five ish years mm-hmm. in any sort of meaningful way. And like, this is the first sport I've ever followed. Um I will say that I think it's super, super weird how everyone across the industry speaks about athletes generally. It is, um, yeah. I think there's like a a deep misunderstanding about the labor in sports. This is probably a whole other conversation, no, I, but I, I think it, it I think it kind of plays in here like their bodies are used for labor right like that they are the workers some of the workers in 
in the NBA. And so I have always thought it's really weird generally how people speak about athletes. And then on top of that, I, I do feel quite alienated by the way in which they speak about their bodies and their weight and all of that stuff. It, it's pretty jarring, you know, as someone it is. If, like, I'll be candid with you. I've had a history of disordered eating in my life and it is very jarring to hear people speak about it. Like just on TV, like professionals mm-hmm. being like, yeah, that guy's fat. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm like, these are professional athletes at, at an athletic peak that a lot of us will never reach in our lifetime. Yeah. You know what I mean? So jot that down. First of all, <laughs> um, totally. you can be, yes. you can be incredibly fit um, and healthy and athletic while also not looking like, you know, Jimmy Butler or not looking like, you know, OG, uh, not putting all that time in to like beef up and whatnot. So I think obviously strength is a huge thing in basketball, but I just think people have this massive misconception generally about what a healthy, what a fit, what an athletic body looks like and can do. Um, I think for Zion specifically, I would just say that I feel like the other thing about athletes and injuries that we don't necessarily take into account, um, and I really do mean like sports analysts and, and the people who mm-hmm. professionally talk about sports. Now, I'm just a, a, a lady with an internet connection, so not ah. including myself in this, but I do think that there's like just this very weird uh non-addressing of the trauma that comes around injury. You see that with the way people speak about Pascal hurting yourself, getting scary, scary, scary surgery. That might mean that if you don't heal properly, you never play sports again. Um, You never get to do what you love again. Going back, I feel like, and putting pressure on that and working that injury. Like, I think there's a level of, of trauma there. And I'm sure I know for a fact they have like sports therapists and all that stuff, but someone like Pascal, everyone's mad. Pascal doesn't come out, you know, running out the gate. It's like this man, I had a friend who had a similar shoulder surgery. That, that shit is scary. Like he was like, my kids can't touch me for like three months. Cause his doctor was like, you better not re-injure yourself. Like we going back in there and fixing it is not really an option, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just think that there's like, sort of several layers where in professional sports, mostly just speaking about the NBA here, but there's sort of mm-hmm. layers of insensitivity and ways that, you know, we could be talking about these things that haven't really pervaded this space yet. So I think I just find that jarring maybe as a viewer, but those are sort of the, the things that I have noticed and have, no, I, have sort I, of I, sat with me weirdly. I love that. And I feel like this is, you know, that's kind of what I was going for with this question, like, because it, it sits with me weirdly. And I've been, you know, a hardcore basketball fan for a long time. And it's, you know, I guess when I was a teenager, it's not something I questioned as much, but it's just really kind of gotten worse and worse and not necessarily the descriptions of the bodies. Um, you know, I first, I first, like some of my first memories was the way people would talk about Shaq. Uh, it, it was nonstop with Shaq's weight and it was always weird to me because his best, best years, he kind of carried more weight than some of his other years. And like that added to his power and his dominance. And I mean, yeah, you made so many good points. I think the layers of insensitivity, the trauma of being injured and then, and then scrutinized, you know, Pascal heard his, uh, I think it was his hamstring got COVID. Um, and then, you know, then needed shoulder surgery after he came back from COVID and got injured. And it was the first surgery of his life. So I think, yeah, the, I mean, Pascal is a, to me a great example of, you know, of there's not enough empathy towards, I guess, public figures. And maybe that kind of goes back to, you know, Vong talking about Zion being so public with like, his, his weight achievements and that sort of thing. But it sort of like unlocks this nasty back door for mm-hmm. people who are, yeah, they have a media job or whatever. And it's like, they, they, I guess then feel entitled to like say, Hey, well, I'm, I'm grading these people arbitrarily, but also I'm going to bring in like, you know, I'm going to reference the fact that Zion like has, you know, I, what would really tip us off for me was, 
someone uh, I was listening to was talking about him having a cheeseburger before games. And I, and I guess there's just so much we don't understand about how we like our metabol our metabolism works. And, and like you said, Lauren, different bodies that, that it was just, it, that's why, where this question is coming from, because I feel like that's just not constructive, honest mm -hmm. or, or accurate to like what is happening. And um, also, like, I hope he's not hungry before he plays basketball. Me too. <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> exactly. I hope he's having dinner. Like, I hope all NBA players are having me too. dinner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, like, I remember, you know, again, I, I understand that you have to, like, you know, Steve Nash was, like, had the, the famous, like, no sugar diet. And, like, LeBron has, like, insane diets and all that kind of stuff. But there's also people who are, you know, different. Like, I, I remember Embiid during some of his best playing like you know his best stretches people were talking about how he's like eating like chocolate bars and smarties before the game and i'm like hey man that might work for him and i feel like if the performance is there we can't scrutinize and even if the performance dips i i don't know i guess let's i i just feel like we should challenge each other to not us specifically but um we should expect more but like more sensitivity more i don't know like just just better reporting i guess also, but, fat uh, jokes are lazy. Like they're so lazy. Joke. They're so lazy. There's so many. There's so many funny people on like NBA Twitter and stuff, and that that's not people making fat jokes. So, hundred <laughs> percent. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's all give them the most attention because they they're the ones who deserve it. But uh, yeah, let, let's move on. Let's uh, stick with you, Lauren. And um, okay, the, I, COVID's the lead in here. Uh, but um, we're not epidemiologists. We're not exactly sure where this is going to go. Uh, the league is clearly in a tough place, probably the toughest place since before the bubble. And, um, you know, the Chicago Bulls have canceled games. Uh, the Raptors are playing the Nets, you know, right before, uh, 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 you know, on, on the day of this recording. So uh, when folks are listening to it, hopefully the Raptors beat the Nets. But um yeah, lots of COVID going on. Millsap, uh, I think um, Ajinsa, perhaps uh, also diagnosed with, um, you know, or, uh, you know, in COVID protocols. All that to say, it's like, I feel like that's going to be the dominant storyline for the next little while. You know, whether the NBA should shut down, you know, how people are doing in regards to getting COVID after being vaccinated, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm curious if you uh, think not necessarily because of COVID, but just in general, like, is there a storyline or something you're thinking about that you feel like is not getting covered enough for any reason? Like just to do with the rest of the NBA or to do with COVID in the NBA? Um, I'd say take your pick. Like if it's like COVID in the NBA, that's fine. But like the, the rest of the NBA is sort of what I was going for. But I mean, it was a pretty meandering question. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens, right? Like, yeah. the NBA loves money, so maybe we'll just keep seeing yeah. it happening. <laughs> That's probably the like, answer, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with any of that, but um, I have no financial stakes in it, so um, probably doesn't matter. But I do think, like, you know, it was going to be fun to be like, the Lakers suck this year, and what is the league going to do about it? You know what I mean? Like, what, like... I feel like we're not going to get to talk like about that goofy shit, you know, because it's everything's going to be really serious. Yeah. And we can't just make fun of the Lakers, which I feel like <laughs> is uh, not that I have. I'm 35 years old. Not that I have any shade towards the oldest team in the NBA. Honestly, ah. very, very Tyra <laughs> Banks, very Tyra Banks. Like I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Every washed 30 something basketball <laughs> fans like go 30 plus go oh come God, on Mello, yeah. let's do this but unfortunately they are absolute butt right now and um i just feel like the goofiness of people having conspiracy theories of like the lakers shitting the bed but then still getting to the western conference finals like i'm gonna miss that like level of conspiracy theory basketball mm -hmm. as the very serious covid situation will <laughs> rightly take over everything uh that we talk about 
Mm. Lauren, that was the perfect answer. And I also feel way too seen as I am 35 <laughs> and washed. And when I saw the Lakers getting assembled and everyone's like, they're so old. I was like, well, not so old. Um, but then, yeah, I think the ap- average age of the Raptors is like 24. Um, yeah. Conspiracy theories. The Lakers still doing it. Weird stuff like that. I feel like does kind of get muted a little bit when. You know, obviously there's uh, serious stuff going down, but uh, yeah. How, how about you, Vong? What's um, what's like a storyline, you know, silly or otherwise that you feel like might get muted because of uh, COVID? Well, the the first storyline is is a bit silly and it's very personal because I'm egocentric, but it's it's the the effect on fans because I did have a ticket to Thursday's game <laughs> against. Oh my god, no. Bulls. no! It was the one ticket I've I've had for no. like the past few months. <laughs> And literally, we're playing the game before, we're playing the game after. Oh. It's literally just my game. And I was in the 100 <laughs> section for the first time ever. I really splurged because it was Christmas. And uh, so, yes, I would say the missing storyline is mine. Um, but okay, <laughs> uh, to, be, to uh, bring it more, more, more seriously back to, the, back to the NBA itself. I, you know, right now, you know, trade season's heating up. The... Um, you know what? What is it? Uh, the, the players can be traded um, who were signed in the summer, um, mm-hmm. starting tomorrow, I guess, or I guess uh, today, depending on when people are hearing this podcast. And so, for me, I'd like to see what the effect of trade value is on players who are unvaccinated now that there's Omicron and. You know, I, I'd like to see if any unvaccinated players even get traded, or if they get traded for way less than their value because they're unvaccinated. Um, And then um, another one I think too, that I think is going unreported is like, you know, you you know, like what are the long-term effects of COVID on athletes? Um, You know, we know some of these NBA players had it very early and there was some initial reporting um, of how they felt even months after, but you know, Mm -hmm. we're like a year and a half, two years into this. And you know, Sometimes people aren't taking into account, um, you know, if if a player hasn't been doing as well, um, you know, maybe there are still lingering effects. Like there's, you know, there's just so much unknown and not even just for the people who, who, um, who, um, who actually got COVID, but people whose family members were, were affected like Carl Anthony Towns. Like, I don't even know how anybody can do any real analysis on him um, as a player because I'm just amazed that he's even on the court you know his mm-hmm. his his mom died of covid i think something they said like four other immediate family members of his yeah. died from covid and then i'm watching the broadcast and you know you know and given it it's the analyst job so that they're like analyzing his performance but i was like i don't even know how we can analyze anything like this dude's just gone through like you know four or five deaths from covid in an 18 month span to your immediate family like i don't even know like how we can even judge what he's doing on the court. Like I, I'm just shocked he can even get on the court. And I don't, I don't know. So I think that's being underreported. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a a great point. I feel like long COVID, you know, injuries that have resulted from or potentially from COVID. You know, I even remember, you know, Russell Westbrook. He got he got COVID right before the the rock or you know the the bubble. Uh, and wasn't as good and then people were like oh russell sucks and i was like man this doesn't seem fair uh bledsoe for the bucks got it uh, right before they got um you know swept by miami just like and you know and and injuries too i think people have got yeah. you know injuries after getting covid so i feel like that is something that is also you know valid to keep watch over and mm-hmm. it, maybe it comes back to uh you know lauren talking about like the layers of sensitivity and i feel like there needs to be like a constant covid caveat uh mm-hmm. that perhaps you know, perhaps like the framing of someone doing good or bad needs to have like a kind of consistent like hat tip to this being end times <laughs> you know what i mean um <laughs> and them being injured or sick or whatever. Uh, my my storyline is uh, it's being covered a little bit, but I think that uh, not in a substantial way, and maybe it needs to unfold more as well. But that uh, is, is the changing of the guard. Like my, my whole basketball life, I have 
just been used to the West being yeah. so supremely better than the East that it's like a afterthought and a joke. And I think there's some dust settling going on. Like some of the teams in the East, you know, like the, the wizards or whatever are settling back down. You know, the Celtics look like they're having a bad season. So maybe that's going to even out a little, a little bit, but, uh, after, you know, Utah, Phoenix, and um, uh, uh, the Warriors, it, it seems like a massive, massive drop-off in the West, and that's just not something I've ever seen. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's interesting to me. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's finish this strong. Let's let's do some quickish questions. I feel like we, we, we went all over the place in, in good places today. So uh, let's do it. Uh, Maddie, please join us and give me that quickish questions. Sting. Quickish questions. Da, da, we made it. Quickish questions. Uh, if you know this pod, you know what's coming. I'm going to read some questions as quickly as I possibly can. I might stutter, slur, get confused. That's okay. Uh, whoever is answering the question has to answer as quickly as they possibly can. There's no stalling of any kind or, or, you know, you just, it's, it's a game show. You know what I mean? You got to let it fly. Matt always has tricks to buy himself more time. Absolutely is unacceptable. So please don't do that. <laughs> that sounds so serious. It's yeah. not, it's a joke. Um, okay. <laughs> Matt, I just want you to watch, um, you know, space jam. And uh, <laughs> get it over with, and uh, then we can watch Flubber together. It'll be good times. <laughs> okay, so we we just got two questions. So I am going to I'm going to make this an all play. We'll go uh, we'll go Lauren Vong, Matt two in a row, uh, and then uh, Vong Lauren. Let's do this. Okay, Lauren, would they do another bubble? No. Vong. Money, money, yeah, yeah, you, that's correct. But we'll say Vong. Would they do another bubble? Yes. <laughs> I wanted you to say yes. Money, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> um, Maddie, would they do another bubble? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Cheers. Okay, Maddie. Yeah. I'm just gonna preface this question so everyone can hear it. There's there there was no specification. Oh boy. So, Maddie, what's mm -hmm. your top three? My top three? <laughs> That's right. Don't repeat the question. <laughs> um I think chocolate, um a uh, a nice swish. Sure. And uh <laughs> and you know, when that snow blower is uh, got a real good hum going to it. Okay, love it. Sound of a, sound of a snowblower, sound of a swish, and also just chocolate in general. Love it. Vong, what's your top three? Um, Animal Crossing, Breath of the Wild, and Super Mario Odyssey. Wow. Love it. Video games. <laughs> Lauren, what's up? What's your top three? Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, uh, JV. Wow. Three hottest it. guys in the NBA. Whoa. <laughs> I was going to say, say members of the Heat and JV, but um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's the first time I've heard uh, anyone refer to JV as hot. I'm totally with you. Let me just shout out JV. He's best. One of the best tattoos in the game. He has a rosary tattoo. Okay. And it's like falls on his chest like a rosary would. That to okay. me is like, that's good stuff. Wow. Sorry, I actually could have said Serge Ibaka, but he, you know, he's a he's a six man, six sexiest man of the year. Yeah, six sexiest <laughs> man of the year. He's like, wait, who's four and five? You're like, don't worry, you're coming up the bench, sir. Um, buddies, that's uh, that's the end of the pod. Thank you uh, both so much for doing it, and um, yeah, you know, everyone who's been listening, sharing, spreading the good word. Thank you very much as well. Uh, let's go to you first, Lauren. Um, you know, you got Cavern of Secrets. I don't know if you're you're doing a bunch of shows right now. Uh, I just did my first show a little while ago, so I don't know where everyone's at. But um, yeah, what's going on with you? What, what do you want to let people know or what do you want to say? 
Well, ostensibly, my have br I've brought back my comedy show. Me and Matt Collins, uh, we run a comedy show at the Garrison. Nice M Mondays, usually the first or second Monday. Schedule's a bit weird right now, but yeah, COVID permitting, I guess we have done one show. Maybe we will do more. <laughs> cool. Um, well, uh, follow follow uh, Lauren on Twitter. We'll 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 give you the good so you can. And definitely check out that show at the Garrison. It's a wonderful venue. Um, Vong, what's up? What, what do you want to let people know? Um, yeah, as uh, as mentioned at the at the start of this episode, I'm I'm also uh, doing a podcast as part of the Sonar Network. Love the Sonar Network. Um, called You Better Represent. We publish weekly. Uh, we um, we review Hollywood movies through the lens of representation. Um, and just sort of keep Hollywood in check of whether they're they're holding up what they said they were trying to do of being more reflective of the more diverse population um, nowadays. Both both uh, both um, both um, in front of the camera, like the actors, and behind the scenes too, because we we want to make sure that uh, that uh, people decision making power um, are also diverse. I love it. Yeah, diversity isn't just uh, you know. A showy thing to do. It's a, it's a holistic thing if you're going to do it right. Um, everyone, check out that podcast. Check out uh, you know check out Lauren's show and um, yeah, keep keep up the good stuff with uh, this podcast. And we really really do appreciate it. Uh, Maddie, if you feel like we're we're done and good to go, please just give me those delicious words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network.